Oh, that's my phone. <laughs> that's, yeah, make sure I turn that bad boy off. Turn it up. Not disturb. Oh, it's saying that we're starting. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're in the countdown. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's up? We're in the countdown. Yeah, that's what's up. We should be talking through it. Oh, uh, we should be. I'm yeah. sorry. My bad. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, let me let me hit record. Well, I can hit record. Let me okay. get a little closer for that audio. All Big right. Deal. All right. You're not just <laughs> So, man, I'm fired up that we get to have this conversation tonight. Yeah. I know it's been a difficult week, a long week, yeah. a lot going on in our week, mm-hmm. and uh, but grateful that we get this opportunity to really talk about multiplying gratitude. It's been mm-hmm. a real day, man. Yeah. Full of so many things. Definitely need more gratitude. It's, it's funny when I forget to, to do that, mm-hmm. because usually I try, I try to start my day. Right. It's really how I try to live my life because I have a tremendous amount to be to be grateful for. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I don't, and I let the day, I let the gravity of the day just say, oh, I'm too busy. Right. Can't do this. Can't do that. Can't do this. And then it's like, all right, I'm going to remind you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, I'm tired of being reminded. I don't, I don't want to be reminded anymore. I just mm-hmm. want to, <laughs> sorry, can we just try again tomorrow? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, there's some days like that where it's it's a good day to just, you know, just knock out and just start over. Mm-hmm. And um, so we've, we've had a couple days like that this week. But I'm grateful that we're here at the, towards the end of the week being able to have a real conversation. Absolutely. About the things that really matter, you know? Yep. And so, and uh, I'm so grateful for everybody that's, that's joining us, man. Yeah. I was, I was, I'm still tripping off all of the folks that are connecting with us from Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> you know, I was, I, was, I was watching the podcast on YouTube today mm-hmm. and just think, just looking at that screen and seeing all those folks from Dublin, Ireland. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what in the world? Yep. That's just pretty amazing, man. It the whole world dope. over. Pretty dope. It is. Um, two minutes left. At two minutes, I'm going to hit record on the audio so okay. that people in the audio world can, can connect. Can, yeah. So anybody that's online right now on Facebook, you can definitely connect. Yes. With us. Yeah. Let us know. Somebody's watching. Okay. It's, you know what I found? What did you find? The girls upstairs are watching us. They are. They always do. Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> that's that's what what's they up. always do. Every wow. time, every time you leave, I hear all these comments about like you laugh funny, and you do this, and you guys, wow. you guys' jokes aren't funny at all. Oh, that's and what it is. Like, yeah, and it's like so they're watching us. So if you if you two are watching this good but stop making fun of us Mm -hmm. so yeah and anybody that's on facebook you know you definitely uh, in addition to all of our folks here hey john lugo's watching he said i'm watching i appreciate that lugo lugo's a faithful brother man he is he's always riding with us man that's a ride or die dude right there he is that's my man right there we had a we had a pretty uh deep conversation earlier we'll talk about offline okay that's cool but um yeah he's um he's another one of our brothers who are struggling have have some issues right now Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll, you know, you'll probably have to give him a call. Okay. And give him some well wishes and stuff like that. Absolutely, so, man. 100%. Big shout out to you, brother. Thank you for thank you for sticking with us That's and, right, and, and watching. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it, especially with everything that you're going through right now. So thank you Come so on. much. I know there's lots of folks that are going through stuff, and so we're definitely here for you as well. Yeah, Lugo, I'm looking forward to us being able to catch up, man. Yeah, so we got um, we got two more people watching. Let us know in the, in the comments where you're watching from. Mm-hmm. That would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Let us know where you were, where you were coming from. You're probably from Dublin, Ireland, probably according to statistics. But <laughs> according to statistics, yeah. there's a lot of Irish folks that are following us, man. Yeah, and the Namibians and the the you know and 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 you know the Indonesians and yeah. the Singaporeans. Uh, but you know we're so grateful for everyone that's following us right here in Dale City, Woodbridge, Fredericksburg, yeah. Stafford. Just uh, you know, following the Greater Everyday Podcast, and we're just about thirty seconds out. If you want to make sure you share with folks. That are um, that are out there on mm-hmm. uh, in in the internet world. We definitely want to be able to connect with you. Definitely. And um, and we we you know we post this on Facebook. We also put post it on YouTube, and um, and we definitely are grateful that you can be a part of this conversation. Yeah. So looks like we got 15 seconds. Tanil Twin is watching from Atlanta, the Atlanta area. ATL. Let's go ATL. Let's go. Let's appreciate go. appreciate you joining us here. Let's man. kick this thing off. Yeah, definitely. Nope, not that. That's not what we want. Uh, where are we? No, we don't want that. That's where we want. 
There we are. All right, here we there go. We are live we are. and we are not just local, we're global. Mm -hmm. I want to welcome everyone to the Greater Everyday Podcast. This is a place where we talk about real issues. We do not avoid the difficult issues. We don't avoid the mess that's in our world. We try to bring the message in the mess. We deify no one. We demonize no one. We just deal straight with the issues. And we really seek to offer a greater solution to the challenges that we face. Yep. And I'm grateful to be here with you. My name is Will Archer, and I'm here with my brother. I'm Anton Keith. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you hanging out with us for another Sunday night session. We're going to talk about... Multiply gratitude. Yes. And I just want to say, first off, very, very grateful for the incredible service today. Hey. Much love to the media team. Listen. Guys did an incredible job putting together service. It was Listen. amazing. Now, a big shout out to Marcus. That... that um, the beginning was awesome. Worship team did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. Had an amazing communion. McIntyre's thank you. Amanda, thank you for putting that together. Yes. And then Kai. Oh, my gosh. My man was like uppercut one, yeah. two, one, two. I mean, he was just... I mean, he, he was just winning every round, bro. Preaching the word. Yeah. So, it was inspiring. Yeah, it was great, really good. I hope you guys took those three points that he did. You guys wrote those down and studied and, and studied those out. Because that's, you know, that talk we talked a lot last week about, you know, our vision for the future. Mm -hmm. And he hit on a lot of things that we want to try to hit in, in our next 10 years with the church. Absolutely. And we're going to talk tonight a little bit about the vision. But I want to make sure that we also give some really good airtime to talking about the three big points. Yeah. That, that Kai talked about. He talked about multiplying gratitude. Yeah. And we are just days away from Thanksgiving. So we got to multiply gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, he talked about multiplying humility. And he talked about multiplying Jesus. Yeah. So. And just think if people went out every day. And, you know, not every day is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. But what if you went out and made those three things your priority? That's it. You know, I mean, would it be perfect? No, but I think it would be better... It would, be, it would be more good than bad, mm -hmm. definitely. You know, what I've found is when you take the time to sit down and think about what you're grateful for, think about who you're grateful for, all that God's taken you through. I mean, it changes your perspective. Gratitude just refreshes your mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to, um, you know, I know some people don't like to do that because maybe it brings up a lot of negative things that have mm -hmm. gone on in your life. If you start thinking about what you're thankful for, mm -hmm. maybe that maybe that makes com come up like, I've lost a lot mm -hmm. and I'm just happy for the things I do have. Mm -hmm. And, but that's, you, you know, you can't look at it that way. You have to be like, yeah, I mean, maybe you have, but there are people who, who still need you and you need to be thankful for those people and those things that you do have. So it's cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's so critical for anything that we do moving forward is that we really have that perspective. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think, you know, this is a year like no other year where we need to just stop and really think about what we're grateful for. Yeah. I mean, We've lost so many lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, more lives than I can remember in America's history, losing in a single year to a pandemic. And I know there are more people that die of heart disease, that die of cancer, than have died of COVID. But those people that were dying of heart disease and cancer still died this year. Yes. On top of the people that died of COVID. Right. And so, um, you know, there really is no comparison in the modern age for us in terms of this amount of loss of life in a, in a given year. And, um, and the fact that we're breathing, the fact that we're able to talk about what's really going on, I mean, that's something just to be grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that if you're not, if you don't wake up every day and think that like you are blessed mm -hmm. or highly favored or however you want to, you want to word that, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, amen, you, you get a great life, mm -hmm. but you know, me, I wake up every day and I'm like, amazing. <laughs> uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you don't wake up and say thank you. Mm -hmm. whew, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, it's, it's wild. You know, we're talking about this a little bit before we, we started the show, you know, I was just asking you for the, the login, mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, I think it'd be really great if you could just share with everybody that's listening just a little bit of your testimony sure. of, of where God's taken you from. And, you know, just that story, that that's how we met. Right. It's kind of in, that, in yeah. that journey. Yeah. Yeah. So um, real quick. So my um, <laughs> he was asking for my my Wi-Fi password and my Wi-Fi password is basically um, <laughs> I, I don't know if I should put this out there, but it's a significant number in me and my wife's life. Mm -hmm. Let's just say. Mm -hmm. And and it's a it's a constant reminder. It's basically a number that we have and then the words saved me. 
Mm -hmm. um, because it's so significant. And it's funny because a lot of my other passwords for other things are something like that. And then it has like Jesus in it as Mm -hmm. well, Mm -hmm. because, you know, there I can think of two significant events in my life Mm -hmm. in which I was saved. Mm -hmm. And one was by the brothers of the Potomac Valley Church. And you you all know who you are. So Mm -hmm. big shout to you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, one just happens to be several feet across the street. Mm-hmm. So big shout out to you because I know you watch too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but the rest of them, yeah, they they saved me. I was I was really in a in a place of despair and loneliness mm-hmm. and hate and just really didn't really know where I was going to go from there. And mm-hmm. and some brothers lifted me up. Yeah, you know. And then the other ones were my, was my wife. I was I was uh, dead in our room, basically. I don't. You know, I try not to sugarcoat that because it is what it is. But I was dead in our room. And uh, she, you know, by God's grace, she walked in and saved me. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I use it as a reminder every day that, you know, that people and, you know, God in heaven saved me and Mm -hmm. someone on earth saved me. And so, you know, I have nothing but gratitude every day in my life. And when I don't have it, when I let the day, you know, pass me by because I, I'm too busy or mm-hmm. too tired mm-hmm. or any other excuse I want to throw in there instead of having that gratitude. God has a way of reminding me like, Hey, remember where, where you were? Let's not mm-hmm. go back there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it makes me stop, pause, take a break, pray and try to bring myself back there to remember that, you know, you know, I, it could have gone a different way. It Either could one have. of those things. It could have. And I think it's so critical to have that attitude of gratitude mm-hmm. because the truth is, man, I, I remember that story because we lived it together, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and I mean, it was such an honor to be able to study the Bible with you. Um, and, uh, it was so life changing for all of us seeing literally your life flash before you, you know, mm-hmm. you being dead and being brought back to life and being resuscitated and your journey there. And, um, I'm just, uh, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that, you know, you, you never know the impact that one person's life will have on your life. Right. And, you know, and for all the people that are doing the great work, you know, in, in the healthcare field, every life you save impacts so many other lives. Mm-hmm. And every life that's lost is the opportunity for that impact being limited. And that's why I think this tragic loss of life is so important because every life has such a profound ripple effect. Yeah. You know, it is really, you know, a rock dropped in the in the lake that ripples and impacts so many other lives. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to encourage you as you're listening. You know, I think it's critical. I want to encourage you take the time just to sit down and really think about what you're grateful for, you know, and and who you're grateful for and how people have been able to really be in your life. You know, I, I think it's powerful for me at this time in the year, but all throughout the year to write down a gratitude journal. You know, Mm. man, I'm grateful for my wife. And here's why I'm grateful for my son. And here's why I'm grateful for my daughter. I'm grateful for our community. I'm grateful for my friends. And I just got off a call before we got here on the podcast, talking with all of our senior leaders in the church, you know, our board, our core group, a number of other, you know, key leaders talking through the plans for, you know, the, the new Prince William campus mm-hmm. and talking through the plans for the new preschool that will launch in June of 2021. And uh, I'm just so grateful. I mean, the faith of these Christians, it's just unbelievable to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, it really is, man. Yeah. And uh, so I appreciate what God used Kai today to help us with, that we need to multiply gratitude, you know. And I think that, that you know, a grateful person, that attitude of gratitude changes your perspective. Yeah. It's, it's but uh, don't think that it's going to be an, an easier life because mm-hmm. it, it's actually when you care about, when you try to care about everything that's around you, mm-hmm. that makes life, mm-hmm. you know, when you look at life as being, you know, you, you see those statistics and they yeah. love to put them up on the screen all yeah. the time and stuff like that. But yeah. when you take that personally, mm-hmm. because you, you you understand that life is so precious yes, and then you see numbers like 200,000, 250,000, this, that, a uh, million people worldwide, mm-hmm. like that's a, a um, tremendous hardship yeah. to bear. Yes, it is. You know, so just, you know, if that's, that's going to be something that you maybe you didn't know that was going to happen. And that's why living this life thinking that you can do it by yourself is not the best thing to do no. because when you try to live this life and, and live with a life of gratitude, mm-hmm. there's a tremendous, there's, there are stresses that you might not think about that, that 
you know, that can bear, you know, burden your soul. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know Jesus talks about uh, like, you know, his, his yoke is light and like, you got to put it on God mm-hmm. and Jesus to, to like release yourself from some of that stuff. Cause if not, it can be overbearing. Absolutely. And you know, faith informs everything that we do. You know, we are disciples of Jesus first and foremost. And so we want to look at a scripture tonight from Colossians chapter three, mm-hmm. and we're looking at a couple of passages, but this is the first one we're going to take a look at right in Colossians chapter three. And, um, and uh, it's it's such a powerful passage. We'll start in verse 15. There you go. Yep. And it, it says right here, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell richly, um, uh, the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs with the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It says, be thankful. Always be giving thanks to God. Whatever you do, give thanks. It says, sing songs with gratitude in your heart. I mean, this attitude of gratitude is just soaked within these three verses. 15, 16, 17, grateful, 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 grateful. Mm -hmm. We need to multiply gratitude in everything yeah. that we do. And we, we've got to recognize that's where the power comes. The power comes in being grateful and recognizing you're not entitled to anything. Oof. I know. We uh, live, bro. We that's live, another podcast. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but we got, we, got, we got generations of people and people be throwing, yeah. throw, you know, throwing shade, putting, you know, putting up shade on, you know, um, putting shade on, on, the, on the millennials like they're entitled yeah, but the truth is, man, I see this stuff across all generations. And, you know, you know, uh, older folks who feel like they're entitled to respect. Younger folks who feel like they're entitled to respect. You're re- entitled to services. You're entitled to X, Y, or Z. And, and, and I just want to say that that attitude of entitlement, it's, it's not a positive attitude. Now, I'm not talking about not standing up for your rights. That's right. not what I'm talking no, about. No, no, D- no, different no, conversation, no, okay? No. So, I'm, you know, there are rights that we all have, and you're, you should be treated equally to anyone else. Mm-hmm. But there is also an attitude of entitlement, rich, poor, black, white, Latino, Asian, across the board that we have. And, and gratitude completely demolishes this entitlement attitude, mm. you know, because gratitude is like, look, I'm just thankful, man. I'm thankful for what I have. I'm thankful for the days I have. And I think that pairs so nicely with Kai's second point that he made today when he said we need to multiply humility. Now, I'll be honest with you. I struggle with this whole idea of humility, you know, (laughs) and just to keep it 100, a part of what caused me to struggle with the idea of humility is that, you know, you and I, we're both African-American men. We're both black men. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and honestly... I viewed humility for a lo- large part of my life as being subordinate or subordinate myself to someone. Okay. You know, and I'm like, mm, I'm not trying to do that. You no. know, like I'm not trying to, mm-mm. the the world's already trying to break me down. I'm not going to help the world with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? By breaking myself down. But I studied the scriptures because I would constantly have people saying to me growing up, man, you're just proud. Now, honestly, I took that as a good thing because my grandfather was proud. My dad was proud. I'm like, you're right. I'm proud. I walk, you know, proud and tall. That's how Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be. Yeah. You know, but it wasn't a positive. They weren't trying to encourage me. But I was like, hey, go ahead, hater. Tell me what you got to tell me. (laughs) I'm cool. I'm going to keep doing me. Yeah. But but it's because I didn't understand what the Bible was talking about. Right. When it talked about pride. And there's a difference between being confident, being secure and being proud or being insecure. And the difference is pride has to do with how you view yourself compared to other people. Humility is all about how you view yourself in light of who God is. And once I understood that, I realized I should never put my head down. I should always put my head up to God. But I should never look down on anyone. I should always look at other people. And, um, and you know, and it, it changed my paradigm. And there's a scripture that helped me with this more than anything. If you don't mind just turning over to Isaiah 66. Yeah, let me get you there. And, uh, man, this scripture just, I mean, 
it's like, bro, I'll be honest. I struggled, man, forever. Because I was like, mm, ain't nobody trying to listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real. I'm like, mm, no, nah, man. You, you're you not going to tell me to, to subordinate myself to you. Yeah, you can try with, try with somebody else. You know, he says 66, right? Isaiah 66. And yeah, the, it, verse 1, it says, this is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. Where is the house you'll build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hands made all these things? And so they come into being, declares the Lord. This is the one. These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit and tremble at my word. God says, you know, I, I built everything. I, I'm in control of everything. The whole universe, everything you can see is just my chair. Imagine my living room. Imagine my house. Like I, God's like, I'm the fullness of everything in every way. And your planet that you fixate on, and you're like, man, if I could, I want to rule the world. Or I want to get my message out to the world. I want the world to pay attention to me. God's like, that's just my footstool. Mm -hmm. Now, who, who am I looking for? I'm looking for the person who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. So we should never tremble in the face of other people. People are just people. You know, hey, look, don't, don't, uh, don't demonize anyone. Don't deify anyone. Don't. You know, everybody uses the bathroom the same way. Everybody's mm -hmm. just a person. But you should not you should never, ever look down on people because they're made in the image of God. But you should always look up to God. Yeah. And we need to multiply this kind of attitude because that attitude is an attitude of confidence. It's not self-confidence. It's God confidence. It's very different. Yeah, I mean, I think that for a lot of people, I think pride is thinking that you're on top of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think in reality, like you said, once you read the scriptures, yeah, you know, that spot's only reserved for, for one being, that's God. One. One. And, you know, and, and so when you think about that, like, okay, well, that means that you're down here with everybody else. You know, yeah. like you said, you, you really have to, it's really about self-confidence and yeah. self-belief. Like, you can't be in a place where you don't believe in yourself at all, right? But you can also be, at the same time, you can't be in a place where you think that you're some way equal to God either. Because you're not. You're not. You know, and, and that's what that's what messed Adam and Eve up. Yeah. Because they were like, oh, no, no, we want to be God. And it's like, no, nah, man, there's only one God. Yeah. You yeah. know, but, but you know, you know, I think it, it is important to have healthy self-esteem. Oh, absolutely. To recognize that you, you need to, you know, you need to look at yourself. Man, God created me. I'm valuable. My yes. life, it matters. Who I am matters. Uh, but that your confidence doesn't come from yourself. Because what happens is in the 2 a.m. moment, you know that you're messed up. And that's yeah. why we always try to remind people every Sunday, look, we're messed up people. That's okay. Everybody's welcome. Messed up and all. Um, but God's awesome. And uh, what, what Kai did today, and I really want to encourage everyone that's listening to the podcast, this is a sermon you need to listen to. Yeah, it's a sermon you absolutely need to listen to. I mean, the brother just preached the word today. And, um, you know, we need to multiply humility, man. Mm -hmm. We need to multiply. We need to have that attitude of humility. Well, what do you think about a person, young or old, who just hasn't, you know, I know there are a lot of people out there who just don't know their wealth. They, they, right. they, not wealth. Worth. worth. There you go. Better. Better. Um, who don't know that, who don't know their worth, who've mm -hmm. never, who've, who've never been surrounded around people who even believed in them, mm -hmm. you know? And there are a lot of people out there like you know, that. And you I know? think like people like that are very easily swayed and, yeah. and, and, and just like they believe in any sort of thing that sounds good. And it's just like, well, no, you know, first of all, you have to believe in yourself and God. Mm -hmm. And then from then you, you, if you believe in God, you believe God has a plan for you, right? You individually, not you as a group. Not you as a first of all. I mean, he might have a plan for you as a group, but first he has a plan for you individually right. on how you need to serve him. Right. Right. And so you need to go about your business of figuring out what that is because it's not going to come in like a piece of paper. Right. You know, it's not going to mail it to you. It's not, you know, it's not like a bill that you get in an envelope. You have to go out and search for that thing. Right. And, you know, and I think from that, then you go out uh, and, and you believe in your family. You believe in your community and you believe all these things, and I think once you get to that point, um, usually, the like the um, what I want to say, like the pride and things like that, that stuff just seems to fall away off of you. 
You know, mm-hmm. you have pride in a little, but not in a way, not in a negative way. You know, you might be proud of your accomplishments or proud of the thing that you and some group served or something like that. I, I think that like maybe that gets mixed up mm-hmm. with a little bit of, you know, like what, what people really should be doing in terms of humility. I don't know. Yeah, what you think? I, d- I do think it gets mixed up so often, man, you know, but I think what's amazing is just the way that the Holy Spirit led Kai today to really help us to see you need to multiply gratitude. Mm-hmm. You multiply humility. You need to multiply Jesus. You know the solution for humanity? It's not everybody going to church. You don't think so? Nope. I don't think the solution is everyone going to a church building. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. I think the solution is everyone being the church. I think it's actually us following Jesus. Because there are lots of people that go to church that don't follow Jesus a tremendous at all. Tremendous amount. You Way know, too many. And the truth is, that that's a part of the problem that we're seeing in the world. You know, and, and you know, this week, well, really last week, there was a horrible uh, story that was out in the news, you know, about, you know, the, the, the lead pastor for the New York campus of Hillsong, you know, had an affair. I don't know if you heard about this. No. Oh, man, it was, just, it was heartbreaking, you know, and I love Hillsong's music. And, uh, you know, I'm so grateful for all the people that invest in that, that quality music that they put out. But they have a, a, a campus in New York, thriving campus, you know, very successful pastor, you know, you know, connecting with so many um, NBA players and celebrities, baptized a number of celebrities. And, uh, and he had an affair. And uh, they let him go. Uh, you know, credit to, to Hillsong for addressing the issue. And uh, let him go. And then on Instagram, he put out that he'd had an affair, that he was unfaithful to his wife. And so that this is public knowledge. Okay. Um, but, you know, I was looking at that story and I thought, man, there are so many hundreds, thousands of great pastors that are not having moral failures that will be judged based on that story. I think so. Absolutely. And But there are so many, you know, pastors as well that are living compromised lives. Yeah. That yeah. they live these these double lives and their members know, but they just don't see anything better. You know, and so mm-hmm. they're like or, or they maybe they've just grown tolerant of that attitude and that environment. And that they're not multiplying Jesus. They're actually dividing the kingdom of God through their actions. And so look, I want to be one hundred percent clear with you, Anton. I, I'm a I'm a minister, I, I'm a pastor, I, I'm a normal dude. The struggles same every day nothing hidden in my life truthfully my wife would kill me <laughs> and god would i believe god would strike me down so i ain't trying to mess with that it's funny because it's you know, true it's true i'm like look I, I don't know man you know i think you can do that i can't do that i would never i would not live you know what i'm saying but but i sell that to say this i don't think i'm any better yeah i'm just saying it's time for the people of god to recognize that it is not enough to go to church. We need to be the church. It is not enough to talk religious or talk Kinglish or, you know, or talk Christian, you know, language. We need to actually practice Christ. And so that message about multiplying Jesus, man, we need that. Yeah. We need Jesus. We need, because Jesus loves the prostitute. Jesus loves the broken. Jesus loves the rich. Jesus loves the poor. Jesus loves everyone. And that's what we need multiplied. And as we're going into 2021, that's what we're all about as a church. You know, it's really being a force multiplier, you know, being the church who engages the world without fear, without doubt, without self-confidence, but with God confidence, without pride, but with humility, with confidence and clarity. That's what we need. Yeah. And, And the truth is, it begins with gratitude. Yeah. It begins. So thanks. this Thanksgiving, hey, if you eat turkey, good on you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're not doing turkey this year. No? No, dude. We, like, okay, we've done hold, turkey. Hold, hold, pause. We're pause. not doing it, man. Why not? What? You know what? The truth is we talked about it. You know, this year it's going to be super small. We, are, we were going to do a turkey. We've done a turkey every year. But we said, look, none of us really like turkey. <laughs> we, like, we like chicken. <laughs> we like lamb. And we like steak. We're Wait, we're meat people. So you you guys have been making a turkey like every year? Every year. And like eating like twenty percent of it? Yes. 
<laughs> and, and we've give it, we give it away. I always make turkey for the people that come. But uh, since it's just us, like with me and the kids and Tasha, we talked and we're like, look, does anybody here like turkey? No. What do you guys like? Steak, lamb, chicken. We're, we're going to do that. So we're, we're going to enjoy it. Okay. But, but I say that to say this. I haven't had a turkey in, in a long time. Oh, man, I can't remember. You know, and, and no. look, I've had good turkey before. Yeah. But it's just not my favorite meat. No. You know, but let me just say this. You know, we have these traditions and we call this thing, we call this thing Thanksgiving. But I think a lot of us miss the power of being thankful. Mm. So I know one know. thing that we do. We, we, we definitely every year. We sit down, and I know our kids don't like it because we've paused them from doing whatever it is they want to do. Mm -hmm. And we just take like five or ten minutes, and we just talk about what we're, what we're thankful for. Yes. And it's something, you know, my wife, big shout, you know, it's something that she she is good in those moments. Mm -hmm. You know, she stops everybody from doing whatever it is they're doing, watching TV, football, mm -hmm. you know, basketball, whatever it was on. And she's like, hey, wait a minute. Stop. Stop eating. Stop mm -hmm. filling your face with all this food. Mm-hmm. You know, let's get to the table. Let's look at each other in the eye mm -hmm. and talk about what we're thankful for. Because, you know, there, you know, when you look around, you know, like I, I can remember, you know, it was so funny. Like I remember days where I didn't know if I was going to eat or not. But Thanksgiving, yeah. Thanksgiving, I was always somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, that had food and, and everybody was just like, hey, yeah, man, come and eat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I have, I have, great memories about thanksgiving mm -hmm. just being around family and friends and seeing everybody and going to like gotta go to your mama's side you gotta go mm -hmm. to your daddy's side mm -hmm. you know like you know what's grandma cooked the best food mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so yeah but yeah i haven't had a turkey in i don't know maybe since i was like a teen or something i don't know hey bro i tell you what after thanksgiving though because yeah. turkey meat gets super cheap after thanksgiving i might eat <laughs> some turkey after thanksgiving because it's you know i'm all about them savings <laughs> but uh, but I'll say this though, man. On a real, we need to be thankful. Yeah. And and and, dude, I just want to let you know, man. I am thankful for you. I'm thankful for the work that you you put in to really helping to build the kingdom. I'm thankful for your example with your family, and I'm thankful for us being able to do this podcast because this is this is a dream God put on your heart. Yeah. For us to be able to do and. You made it happen, bro. And I'm grateful to be on this journey with you, man. Hey, I appreciate it. I, I, I appreciate the fact that you, you know, it's a Sunday night. And, you know, even though, you know, it's it's um, irregular, usually you would, you know, be preaching all day and this would be kind of be like Sunday night, uh, you know, yep. normally. But because, you know, with everything with the lockdowns and coronavirus and things like that, you're kind of free on Sundays. So sort of. So, you know, like, like but Sundays to, is still a, my longest day. Yeah. It oh, yeah, of course, because I'm I'm it's we've been doing this for how long? I don't know. Like eight months, eight months. Eight and months. still between 10 and 1130. I'm still sitting there like I know, bro. And I know Marcus is, too. <laughs> Marcus and I, um, Amanda, everybody else who helps us put this thing together. We're all like we're all in a group chat like. Did it, is it, is it going to work? Is mm -hmm. it okay? What's this? Is it playing right? Mm -hmm. Is it this? Is mm -hmm. that? Okay, did it load right? Okay, mm -hmm. and it is so nerve wracking, but you know the fact that you know we can come on a Sunday night and and talk about the issues that we need to talk about mm -hmm. is you know really 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 cool. So you know I just thank you for for making some time to come and, and hang out in the studio and and, and rap. Absolutely, bro. I'm I'm thankful for you, man, and I, I'm thankful for. You know, this week I was just thinking a lot. I've been thinking all week long, you know, about this humble savage brand that you put out, man. And I love that that uh, that quote. Oh, there you go. Okay, please share the link for the sermon. Absolutely, man. Oh, for sure. Yeah, sure, for sure, bro. We'll definitely share the link for the sermon, and you you will we'll share a couple other links with you as well. Yeah, Absolutely. let me um while while we'll, where you you finish that point, I'll find the link to and, and you to, drop it yeah I'll put it in. yeah you know i mean you know as we've been talking about this you know your humble savage brand you know just the um the latin phrase that you have there from from that if you want peace prepare for war mm -hmm. and the truth is you know we do want peace yeah but we have to have the courage to step forward and prepare for battle yeah i think we're gonna see you know a lot there's a contingent in the country that feels like oh man you know happy days are here again 
you know, Biden's won, the Democrats have taken, you know, the White House. Mm -hmm. And then there's another contingent in our country that are like, man, this is the most worst thing in the history of the world. You know, the, the Republicans have lost, you know, the world's going to pot. <laughs> yeah. And, and I just want to say the battle has neither ended nor started. We're in the middle of it. Yes. And I, I think we've got to recognize that the fight we've got to fight is the fight for our faith. The fight we've got to fight is the fight for our families. The fight we've got to fight is the fight for our communities. And I don't want to diminish the importance of politics, but I think sometimes we overstate the importance of politics and we fail to recognize our responsibility to really fight, you know, for, for what's right. And let me just say, if you want peace, prepare for war. You know, as we come back after Thanksgiving, we're going to talk a little bit more about being a force multiplier you know, what it really looks like as we're talking about multiplying leaders. We need to be force multipliers. We need to recognize that we need to fight for our families. Mm -hmm. We need to fight for our faith. We need to fight for what's right. And we need to be willing to multiply what really matters because the, the forces that are committed to division in our world are consistently pursuing their divisive patterns. And a lot of us, we, we act like we're powerless. We're like, oh, I don't know. Somebody nationally will come and save us. Yes. Instead of recognizing the truth is whoever's in office, you still need to love your kids. Whoever's in office, you still need to love your spouse. Whoever's in office, you still need to lo love your roommate. You still need to love your coworker. You still need to be who God's called you to be. And I think we need to change our perspective. But again, it begins with gratitude. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, sometimes I struggle with the thought that, you know, with the, well, I think sometimes that people are so quick to just take their moral compass away from Jesus. Right. And give it to just somebody like, else. Oh, it's the president. So let's just give it to him. Oh, well, the president's awful. Well, that was that your, <laughs> he's a human. Is that the source of your, yeah, your, like your peace looking, yeah. or the lack thereof? Yeah. It's it like, shouldn't be, no, man. No, and it's, 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 it's God. It's going to stay God. And I'm not moving it from there. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to condemn things that are, that are not God's way. And I'm going to praise things that, that, that are. And I'm not going to move from that because of the times or because of what comes in the news or what happens in the newspaper or media or some blogger says something. I'm not going to just change, you know, just because it's popular on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Right. You know, my compass stays the same no matter what. Absolutely. And I don't think you should be dispassionate about what's going on in the world. I think you need to care. And the fact that people are motivated and that they care is a positive. I want to celebrate that. I'm just saying, I think where we get our security and our confidence is often misplaced. Yes. Often. And, and I think that's why we can get so caught up in feeling entitled is because we, we forget all of what we have and we're not grateful mm -hmm. for what we have. And sometimes people say, be grateful to shut down people raising objections. I'm like, raise your objection. I'm mm -hmm. grateful that you can have that objection. I want you to, to, to advocate for what you think is right in the world. But be sure that you're grateful. Yeah. And then from a place of gratitude, pursue true humility, not subordination, not subjugation, not putting your head down, not letting anybody, you know, put their foot on, on, on you, but really recognizing, all right, I need to fear God. I do not need to fear people. I need to be confident in the face of people. And then we need to multiply Jesus. Because the grateful, humble person is able to accept the call to discipleship. And that is the force multiplier. So I'm looking forward to us really being able to dive a lot deeper into talking about, you know, after Thanksgiving, what it's going to mean for us to be a force multiplier. Yeah, it's going to be a good cop topic. We would love, love, love to hear from you guys what you think about it. Leave your comments below or email me at greatereverydaypodcast at gmail.com. Leave us a DM um, on um, on here, on the Potomac Valley Church's main main uh, page, um, Instagram, we're you know doing amazing, amazing things, great things, amazing things, and you know we're just gonna keep trying to keep connecting with people. That's really all that we're doing. We're not buying followers or paying influencers or nope. any of the other stuff. We're doing we're the good meeting. good old fashioned organic way, man. Yeah, we're just meeting people where they are, and they're like, 
guys are pretty cool. We're like, okay, well, would you like to, you know, talk or share or anything like that? And we just keep growing from there. So good, like you said, organically. Yeah, God's blessing, it, man. I just want to say to everyone, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. We, brother, happy Thanksgiving to happy you and your family. Whether you have turkey or not, <laughs> I pray that you can have a happy Thanksgiving. You know, I was thinking about, uh, I heard somebody say that they were, was it, who was it? Might have been Carlos. Big shout out to you, Carlos. I think he said that he was going to go, um, he was going to fry a turkey. Oh, that's the best. And then get sides from Mission Barbecue. What? And I said, <sighs> sides from Mission Barbecue, huh? That's, uh, I'm definitely not frying a turkey. That's a lot of work. Um, man, it, that stuff, a, that it, stuff tastes good, though. You I inject know. it with all the... the yeah. The, the, I have the, a bad childhood. Yeah. Story. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. My, my stepfather... <laughs> <laughs> tried to do that indoors one day. Oh one time. no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, we had a we had a you know, we had to do a remodel. <laughs> oh <laughs> snap. Yeah. Oh snap. Yeah, I'm was, sorry, bro. Yeah, it was it was as a kid, I'm like fifteen years old, I'm like Oh no. <laughs> oh no, not a forest fire inside your home. Yeah. Oh brother, it went I'm a little sorry. wild. Um, oh man. So Smokey other- Smokey caught you <laughs> called right. you down. That's right. Oh, so man, I'm, sorry. Um, I'm not definitely not doing that, but he Don't is, do that. Anybody that's pit- thinking about doing that in your house, don't do that. Yeah, he is a pit master. But I yeah. was definitely thinking about getting sides from like a barbecue place because I love barbecue places. Sides. You know what? The mayor of, of uh, the, the town of Dumfries, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Mayor Derek Wood, he does amazing sides and, yeah. and also turkey. And so you should check him out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's You're listening to he's, this. He's, yeah. Hey. Much respect, man. Much yeah. respect. So I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, he, he does. He does good work there. And um, but, you know, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, we definitely want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And to those that are outside the country that are listening to this, you know, please uh, celebrate American Thanksgiving with us. But I want to encourage you. Be thankful. Take the time to be thankful. Take the time to re- write down this week what you're thankful for and know that we're thankful that you're following along with us as we're having this conversation. But wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I pray that you will have the courage this week, every day, to be a little bit greater. That you'll have the courage to absolutely multiply gratitude, to absolutely multiply humility, but also for us all together to multiply Jesus. And I'm looking forward next week to us talking about what it means to be a force multiplier and really changing everything. This has been the Greater Everyday Podcast. As always, connect with us online. You can find us anywhere, and we are so grateful to be able to connect with you. Yeah, we're everywhere. Everywhere you you would get a podcast from, even if you just Google us, we're there. So, yeah, we are. We've worked really hard to try to get every, try to meet you wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we've accomplished that, and we're growing at it every week. Actually, our listenership has gone up again. We took a little dip, um, but I was checking everything out today and we're back up to normal standards wow that's awesome and so um thank you to you guys for for like picking back up where you left off i'm not taking any more trips so we won't have any more dips and waves and anything like that we're here through the new year amen so um yeah so you know you know i think that's good place to leave it for now we're up we're approaching 40 minutes we're right there so guys thank you so much it's been amazing as usual thank you so much for for leaving comments in the in the in the chat And you want to get us out of here? Absolutely. It's been great. It's been real. As always, this has been the Greater Everyday Podcast. Stay true, stay real, and we'll catch you on the other side. See you guys. Peace.